everybody. Welcome to another episode of Caffeine with John Padano. This is Daniel. I'm actually at my Houston office this morning. i uh, been excited. We're a little over halfway through the push month. Uh, today's May 18th. I hope everybody's having the month that they want to have. If not, there's plenty of time left to uh, finish the month how you want, right? Uh, of course, before we introduce John, it wouldn't be Caffeine with Padano without referencing Kirby Life. Uh, again, another reminder that there is $100 Bonus, if you recruit someone in when they sell their icebreaker, you receive a free Kirby when they get their stick sale. Uh, the Kirby Life Recruiting Program is one of the most important programs in all of Kirby. So hopefully everybody watching is taking advantage of these programs. Uh, without further ado, the one and only John Padano. Good morning, Kirby world. Hey, thank you, Dan and Randy. Don't forget, wash your hands, social distance, wear your mask. Today I want to cover and talk about sales clinchers, right? We talked about them earlier, but how do we learn sales clinchers? Like if you take the 99 sales clinchers and you read them all, how many are you going to know? None, right? So how do you learn them? You learn them by using them in a house. When I was a brand new dealer, it was a little challenging for me, so I got a great tip from a pro that told me, make a cheat sheet. Well, you know, when I was in high school, I probably cheated a little more often than I should have. And when you cheat, you don't write the whole formula down. All you do is write down a keyword or two. And if you take a sales clincher and take the keyword to it, it reminds you of the whole clincher. Now, a couple things I want to point out is one, they're probably not going to sound silky smooth the first time you give a customer that sales clincher. Matter of fact, probably be a little rough around the edges. But as long as you keep doing something over and over and over again, it's going to get better, it's going to sound better, and you're going to start getting that response from that customer that you want to get. Now, if you remember earlier on a Caffeine with Padano, we talked about the formula for sales clinchers, right? Have a dirt pad in your hand. We talked about ending it in a question. Give the customer the answer that you want them to say, and of course, Make that display of dirt right in front of that customer to start out. So I'm going to go ahead and look, we all know the fault sales clincher. If I say the word F-A-U-L-T, fault, we all know that sales clincher is what? John and Mary, this dirt isn't your fault. Plain and simple, it's your vacuum cleaner's fault, isn't it? See, when the Kirby's on in a house, should we be trying to talk to the customer right now? Probably not. When that Kirby's running, you should be thinking about what you're going to say when you shut it off. What I used to do when I was pulling dirt is I would simply put my bag to that customer for a second, take a little peek at my cheat sheet. That way, when I turn the Kirby off, I actually had something intelligent to say that would lead them towards a sale. So again, the first sales clincher we're going to talk about is fault. John and Mary, this dirt is it your fault. Plain and simple, it's your vacuum cleaner's fault, isn't it? If you want to pick another sales clincher, let's go with only reason. John and Mary, the only reason to vacuum is to get the dirt out, isn't it? There really is no other reason to clean if your machine's leaving all this dirt behind, is there? Otherwise, you're just wasting time, electricity, and money going through all the motions and hard, emotions and hard work of keeping your home clean. Leaving all this dirt behind just doesn't make any sense, does it? And then the last part we talked about on sales clinchers is ending it with a reminder about your contest, right? So, hey, John and Mary, keep in mind, if you see something you like or need, I've got a chance to win that trip to Lake of the Ozarks. Just remember, if you like it, let me know. Fair enough, right? And so you plug in that formula. And that gives you things to talk about and things to say while you're pulling your 40 or 50 dirt pads with the upright. Here's another one. If we say children's playground, John and Mary, we call our carpet the playground of America's children, don't we? And I know that you want to keep your playground as clean as possible. Isn't that right? Hey, keep in mind, because of my contest, we're doing special things today. If I say lawnmower, razor, hey, John, you wouldn't mow the lawn if the lawnmower didn't cut the grass, would you? Matter of fact, the neighbors would make fun of you, wouldn't they? <laughs> and I'm sure you'd never shave your beard with a dull razor, right? Then I know you don't want your wife or you to be vacuuming with a vacuum cleaner that doesn't clean, do you? Fantastic. Hey, keep in mind, because of my contest, we're definitely going to do something special today. And then if I go ahead and I look at my cheat sheet one more, I realize I've got good housekeeping on there. 
And that kind of ties in perfectly with fault, doesn't it? John and Mary, good housekeeping, like every other occupation, demands good tools. You need the right tools to do a good job. Isn't that right? Hey, keep in mind, and again, it just follows that same formula. Now, here's the crazy thing about Kirby, right? We said a sales clincher is a reason for people to buy the Kirby today, right? The more reasons you give them to buy the Kirby during the presentation, the easier it is for them to make the big decision at the end to buy it from you. So sales clinchers are little, yes, I'll buy it, yes? So the reality of it is this. If you're brand new today and you made a little cheat sheet and you picked five sales clinchers that you liked or you used these five, right? What would happen by the end of the week? The first thing that would happen is you'd end up selling some Kirby's, right? Because you would actually be giving that customer good solid reasons to get one. The second thing that would happen is when you sell a Kirby, you make money and here's what I know. When you make money in Kirby, you could stay in Kirby another week, right? If you're not making money, it's awfully tough to stay in the business. So now you've got, now the third thing that happens is by the end of the week, those five sales clinchers would be memorized. Not only would they be memorized, but you'll have them so ingrained in your presentation that you will actually say them at the same point in every presentation that you do. Now, what could you do the next week? You could learn five more sales clinchers, five different ones, and you use those five new ones with the five old ones. Then the next week, you could learn five more. And if you figure it out in only an eight week span, right, less than two months, at five clinchers a week, you would know 40 reasons why someone should buy the Kirby from you today, right? Now, if you're new today, you probably don't know any reasons why they should buy one today. But do you think if you knew 40 good reasons why someone should invest in a Kirby, the odds of selling one today would greatly increase? Matter of fact, you wouldn't be thinking on if you were going to sell one, it would be more like how many am I going to sell today? The sales clinchers not only help you do a great presentation, but those same sales clinchers will turn you into a good closer. Because the same sales clinchers that you use during the demo can be used to close the sale at the end and overcome objections. So look at, again, make a cheat sheet. Another idea, sometimes we would write the sales clinchers on the inside of the box with the keywords. Sometimes we'd put them on dirt pads. Every so many pads put a keyword. Doesn't matter how you learn them, the important thing is to learn them. See, the only way to get better at Kirby is to get better on purpose. How many of you yesterday did the best demo you've ever done in your life yesterday? And if you did a demo and it's not the best demo you've ever done, why wasn't it? Right? See, in life, we're either getting better on purpose or we're getting worse on accident. When we don't put the effort in and we don't improve on purpose, we don't even realize it, but we're actually moving the wrong direction. We're moving backwards. So keep on moving forward in Kirby. Keep setting your goals. Keep looking for that next promotion. Learn your sales clinchers. And you know what? You're on your way to being a factory distributor. And with that being said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and do my usual disinfectant job. And again, right? Can't say it enough, use that disinfectant service to get yourself in more homes. The more times we open the box in a customer's home, the more chances we have to sell a Kirby and make money that day, don't we? See, when that Kirby box is closed and it's in the trunk of your car, it's in the back of a truck, guess what? You have a Kirby store, but it's not open for business. The only time your Kirby store is open for business is when that box is open and you're in front of a customer showing off that machine. So by using the EPA approved BioS disinfectant service using the Kirby spray unit can easily get you more presentations by not only offering a free carpet shampoo, but offering a free disinfectant service of either a rug, a set of furniture, or a mattress, or even hard surface floors, right? This is one of the few disinfectants that can be used on hard and soft surfaces, kills the corona virus in a minute, and other bacteria and viruses within four minutes. It's safe for pets, children, and on food surfaces. You can use it. John and Mary, 
Do you know anybody like yourself that lives in a nice home that I could go over to their home now and shampoo and disinfect the rug? If you could do me a favor, if you could get on the phone and set up an appointment for me to go to right now, what I'll do for you is disinfect a second room, disinfect another surface. Offer that customer something to get names or to get on the phone and set you an appointment. So with that being said, I think last time we disinfected, I pretty much disinfected. This might be the most disinfected room in all the U.S. of A, right? So what I'm going to do is, it's been a minute, but I'm going to disinfect the couch again. And remember two things. A little bit goes a long way, and keep that sprayer moving. We don't want to saturate the surface, right? But here we go. Let it air dry. It might be air dry in a half hour, maybe a little bit longer. If you do it on a hard surface floor, remember to let it sit for four minutes before you wipe it up. That way it can kill what it's gonna kill. Hey, we are positive. Let's finish this push munch strong and let me turn it back Absolutely to Absolutely amazing. Every time uh, you see John Padano, you should have your notepad and your pen. The only way to get good at selling is by becoming a student of selling and taking notes and implementing the things that John is teaching you and you can get your closing average better than one out of two, one out of two and a half, right? Look, May 18th, the push month is still on. Let's finish strong. Uh, wishing you all the very best for the rest of the month.